Hello everyone and welcome to our TechSoup webinar introducing QuickBooks Online. We're very happy to have you join us today. Before we get started, I just want to make sure everyone's comfortable using ReadyTalk, the webinar platform we're using today. So you can chat using the box in the lower left side of your screen. You can use this tool to ask questions of the presenters at any time or share any comments that you have. We'll track questions. We've got a couple people helping on chat, so we'll get back to you as soon as we can. You are muted, so you don't have to worry about us hearing any background noise. Please note that with the chat, you won't see each other's chats. So that's a little different than some other platforms. At any time, just let us know if you have any technical issues, audio problems, or having problems viewing the slides. If you do lose your connection, you can just return to the email message with the link that was emailed to you to rejoin. If you registered more than an hour ago, the reminder email has this PowerPoint slide deck attached as a link in the right-hand column. Some of today's webinar will be a live shared demo, so that part won't be in the slides, but it will be in the recording to view later. If you're hearing an echo at all, you might be logged in twice. So you might need to close one of the ReadyTalk windows. You can also dial in to that ReadyTalk support line listed on the screen to contact ReadyTalk for any other technical issues. We are recording this session, and you will be able to view and listen to that archived version at a later time. It will be available on the TechSoup website along with the past webinar presentations. And you will get the full recording, the slides, and any links that we share today in a follow-up email from me by tomorrow. If you tweet, you can see our hashtags there. You can use TechSoup or TechUp. And my name is Stephanie Gerding. I'll be the moderator for today's event. And we do have Allison from TechSoup who will be sharing more about the donation program, and then our wonderful presenter, Greg. We also have a few people helping out with chat, chat today. We've got Allison and Allie from TechSoup, and we also have David Webb and Marga from QuickBooks Made Easy as well. So great opportunity for you to ask any questions that you have and really get some good expert uh, help with that. Very quickly, the agenda for today, I'll just go over a very quick introduction to TechSoup and then turn it over to Greg who will tell us all about what QuickBooks Online is and isn't, how the online version and the desktop versions are different, and you'll be able to determine if this is a good solution for your organization. He'll also do a lot of live demoing. So he'll show us how uh, to get registered, some things like transitioning from desktop to online, how to navigate that online edition. We'll close up with additional resources for you today. And also note that this is a 90-minute webinar, so we will have some good time for questions and answers at the end as well, anything that should come up. So let's practice using that chat a little bit. In that chat, if you could share where you are. As presenters, we're kind of all over the map today. So uh, we have people from the TechSoup headquarters in San Francisco. I'm in Seattle, Washington. And Greg, I think, is in Georgia. Allison's in Philadelphia. And whoa, and you guys, what do we have? Someone from Poland, Canada. We're international, guys. <laughs> Missouri, California, DC, Virginia, Alabama. I think we covered it all. Man, Montana. Wonderful. Good. Some other Washingtonians. Albuquerque. Great. All right. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. Wisconsin. Beautiful. Okay, so a little bit about TechSoup. TechSoup is dedicated to serving the world's NGOs. The need is global, and so are we. TechSoup is a 501c3 a nonprofit, just like many of you, and we were we are working on empowering. Our reach is definitely global, and we're working towards a time when every social benefit organization on the planet has the technology, the resources, and the knowledge it needs to 
operate at its full potential. So in that, we also help NGOs overcome language, economic, geographic, cultural, and access barriers. Our impact together, of course, we do um, have some great statistics on the impact that we have. And you're probably already familiar with TechSoup's product donation programs. And as I said before, Allison will be telling you more about the products that uh, will deal well with QuickBooks as well. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Greg, our star today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Of course, of course. Thank you very much. So, hi everybody. How's it going? Say hi to me. I like I like a lot of a lot of chat back and forth. I've got David on the call. Is going to um, read questions aloud. Hey, April. How's it going? Who's from Poland? I just spent two weeks in Poland, like um, uh, last month. Uh, I've got people from Hawaii. That's oh, wow. awesome. But whoever it is that's from Poland, Poland is awesome. By the way. <laughs> Uh, yes, Jamie, I have a southern accent. All right, so uh, but it's I'm in I'm in Georgia. I have to have a southern accent. Oh, there we go. Nate's from Poland. How's it going? Uh, I volunteered there at a summer camp, but we'll talk about that later. All right, so um, <clears throat> go ahead and look at the screen here. So what we've got is a little picture of me, and I do a couple of things in my professional life. One thing I do. Uh, is I uh, own QuickBooks Made Easy, which we'll get to in a second. And then the other thing is I am a um, <clears throat> I own an accounting firm in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Greg Boston CPA PC. So I specialize in nonprofit organizations. I do audits of around 25 nonprofits uh, a year. We have about 80 or 90 uh, nonprofits that we do the 990s for, uh, and then I serve on boards. So kind of like nonprofits is my thing. Uh, I do that. And then I also own QuickBooks Made Easy. And what QuickBooks Made Easy is, it's a company who specializes in industry-specific training. So what our goal is, is to basically teach people how to use QuickBooks that are in industries that are a little bit tough. Um, in terms of the reporting requirements. And the two main ones we focus on are contractors and nonprofits. Uh, since nonprofits is my gig with my CPA firm, it makes a lot of sense. So um, how does QuickBooks Made Easy teach nonprofits to use QuickBooks? Well, we have three uh, ways that we do it. Uh, we have DVDs, uh, training products that are basically DVD classes with handbooks. Um, and we also have tech support, and then we do live seminars across the country. Now, we have a training product especially for nonprofits, uh, for uh, nonprofits using the online edition or ones that want to use the online edition. It's the only product on earth that is especially for nonprofits using QBO. We're going to give you a big discount for it at the end. Um, the uh, tech support we're going to give you a discount on too. We'll talk about that at the end. Live seminars. So we go to about 20 different cities a year. Uh, I think this year we're going to 24 actually. We're kind of done with 2015 except for Pennsylvania. So if you happen to be in any of these three places in Pennsylvania and you want to see me live, if you can, um, there's where you go. Um, uh, oh, you, you sign up at QuickBooksMadeEasy.com up at the top there. Uh, and then uh, next year our 2016 schedule will be announced, and there's a little, uh, a little link there where you can uh, sign up to be notified. All right, because we, like I said, we go to about 24 cities uh, a year live. All right, so enough of that. Um, uh, just so, that, just to kind of get our head screwed on here, QuickBooks is an accounting financial. It's a financial software package. All right, just in case for those of you that aren't sure, um, it tracks financial statements. Uh, tracks uh, invoicing, does accounts receivable, accounts payable. It will also do payroll, and it will process credit cards. You'll need to have an add-on for that. Um, and uh, <clears throat> that is an additional fee, but uh, it does do both of those things. And then for the nonprofit world, uh, for the nonprofit world, it will function as a light donor database. You will be able to get donation reports. You can get year-end donor letters out of it. It's not bad. It will even send a receipt to the donor if you enter a donation during the year that can kind of serve as their 
um, notifications so that you've um, satisfied your IRS requirements. It's pretty good. All right. Um, now before we go any further, here's my first poll. Um, and I think, uh, can you go ahead and start the poll if yeah. you could, or do I start the poll? Yeah, I've got it. Okay, cool. So I want to know who we're talking to here. So how are you using QuickBooks right now? Um, is it uh, never, you've never used it at all? Or maybe you're using the desktop now, but not online. Or maybe you're using online, but you just, actually you just got it. You don't really know very much about it. Then there's a fourth choice. I've been using it for a while. And then my personal favorite, I don't know anything about QuickBooks. I just love Greg's voice. So hopefully at least some person. Yes, we have one person that does. I wonder if that was <laughs> probably you uh, so, or David or somebody. Um, now we got two now. There we go. Oh, good. We got another one. Great. This helps oh, me emotionally. Great. All right. That's wonderful. All right. So uh, I think we're done. Now if I click Skip to Results, then everybody can see. Is that true? Ah, there yeah, you did it. All right, great. So, um, wow. So, a quarter of the people on the phone have never used QuickBooks at all. So that'll be that's good for me to know because we're going to be showing you how to sign up for the online edition. You won't have to relearn how to use QuickBooks. You can just learn it in the online edition. That's nice. Over half of you are using desktop now. So um, we'll talk about how what the differences are between desktop and online, and we'll also show you how you can up you can upload your data file from desktop to the online edition. Okay? So, and then we've got I guess about almost 20% um, that have QuickBooks online, but they don't know that much about it. So thank you for that. That's very helpful. All right. So let's talk. What is QuickBooks Online Edition? Okay? So uh, it's in a financial accounting software package, of course, just like um, the desktop QuickBooks is, but it is cloud-based which means it's accessible from anywhere. All you need is an Internet connection, and you can access the data file from anywhere in the world. Okay? Uh, we have somebody from Poland here, so that's kind of cool. Now, it's a subscription-based service, which means it costs $40 a month. That's the, that's the cost for it. And I'm going to tell you right now that there are three different choices of the online edition. If you go to the QuickBooks website, uh, essentials, well, Simple Start, Essentials, and Plus. Plus is the one that costs $40 a month, and that's the only one that does budgeting. So that's the one that nonprofits have to have. So $40 a month is expensive. And so that's why most nonprofits shied away from the online edition. But TechSoup has now been able to get this thing, and it's just shocking to me, for 50 bucks a year. So that's what's so exciting about this offering. And Allison is going to talk about it in a minute. But it's only $50 a year, so that's pretty, that's pretty impressive here. Now how is it different from the desktop version? And this is primarily interesting uh, for people that are already using the desktop. Well, for one, obviously it's easier to access right, uh, because it's cloud-based. The other thing, if you think about it, if you have the desktop, you have to buy the program, download, and install it onto your computer. So it takes up space on your computer. You don't have to worry about that. Everything is in the cloud here, so no downloading the program. Also, if you have the desktop, I think I'm going to click this little mouse. There we go. So now I have an arrow. Uh, this is better. Also, um, no updating the program. Every year QuickBooks comes out with a new desktop version, but those of you that have it, they update it throughout the year. They um, have bugs that they need to fix, and you have to download and install those bug fixes. They're called releases. Um, it's kind of annoying, particularly if you're in a network. don't have to worry about that if you have the online version. Backing up. Now let's talk about this for a second. Your data files in the cloud. Now that makes people scared in general. Oh my gosh, I don't want it in the cloud where anybody can get to it. Well, can I just um, put forward the idea that your data file is actually a lot more secure in the cloud than it is sitting in your hard drive in your computer. It's a lot easier to hack into your computer than it is to hack into the Intuit servers. All right? The security is much better. Um, so um, I think it's, it's obviously I think it's a better choice, and then it's better for you. You don't have to worry about backing up. 
Okay? The other thing is in the desktop version, if you have like three or four people in your office that need to use QuickBooks, you are supposed to buy multiple licenses all right, for each user. Not true in the Online Edition. In the Online Edition, you can have up to five people in for only that $50 a year. So there's not any extra cost for multiple users. So there's a lot of advantages. Now, <clears throat> I do want to talk to everybody here, so there are some challenges. The biggest challenge of all was the cost, and it's no longer an issue. Okay? The second thing is that the screens look different than the desktop. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and – because I like to be in the program here. I'm going to go ahead and share so that you can see what this looks like. <clears throat> so here I am in the Online Edition. And, and can everybody see that? I just want to make sure that everybody can see that. Is that cool? Somebody, David, tell me that you can see the screen. So I'll move on here. I, I can see it. Okay, well if you can see it, that's all that really matters. All right, so, so this is what the Online Edition looks like. And here's what the desktop looks like. Desktop. Online. Now, can you imagine how freaked out those of us that have been used to using this version, the desktop version, would be if somebody tried to get us to change to the Online Edition that looks completely different? So it does freak people out. So that's one of the things that's different about it. But it's not really that different, I promise you. All right? If you want to write a check in the Online Edition, I'm going to click this little plus sign, and then here's a check, and you fill it out. Now the check screen does look a little bit different. It's a lot bigger, but it's the same pieces of information. Okay? You're putting in who you're paying, and you're putting in whatever the expense account is that you want it to go to. Okay? Not a big deal. Same thing in the desktop. So it's not really that different. Those of you that are new to QuickBooks um, and haven't even looked at the desktop, when you go to the Write Checks window, it looks a little bit more like an actual check, but you're putting the same information in here. Name of the person you're writing the check to. Here's the dollar amount. Here's the expense account down here. So it looks very much the same. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing for a second here. And now you should be looking at the, um, the slides again. I like to talk a little slow to make sure that everybody you know, is, uh, the, the, that the screens basically catch up with my voice so that we're all on the same page here. All right. So let's move on here. All right, so who is QuickBooks Online best for? Okay. Now I have this thing that says today, and I'm going to point out why I'm saying that in a second. But well, at this point, in other words, today, October the 28th of 2015, smaller nonprofits are a better choice for the Online Edition. Now what does small mean? I didn't put a dollar amount here, but I'm going to say if your budget is under 500,000 we'll say, then uh, the QBO is what people call it in the industry, but it's QuickBooks Online. Uh, but you'll hear people saying QBO. They mean QuickBooks Online Edition. But anyway, um, <clears throat> smaller nonprofits, anything under 500,000 good for them. Uh, it's a good choice for you. Uh, additionally, if you have few or no employees, and few restricted grants, okay? then the Online Edition is probably better. Now the reason why I say that is that in, um, when it comes to employees, one thing that nonprofits need to do – I hope uh, if you don't know this, I'm telling you now – is that it's very important that you spread your employees out between program, admin, and fundraising. That's something that we as accountants need to know. And that's a little bit harder to do in the Online Edition than it is in the desktop. Uh, you end up having to do a journal entry to basically do it. So um, I'm just kind of warning you about that. Um, not hard to do. We show you how to do it in my training product. But again, if you've got a lot of employees, and tracking restricted grants is another thing that's a little bit more difficult to do in online than the desktop. But if you just have a few restricted grants, we're fine. Finally, 
if your uh, nonprofit is in the virtual environment anyway, then QBO or the online edition is a good choice. All right. So um, let me think. All right. Hey, let me stop uh, for a second and see who has questions, and then we'll we'll move on. We have uh, a few people that uh, were concerned that there was something that missed under the challenges slide. All uh, right. Regarding reporting, I think. Okay. There's not as many reports. All right. So that is that is a challenge. Most reports that you need out of QuickBooks we can build for you in the online edition. And I'll actually show you how to do it in the training. But there are the reporting capability just isn't as robust. So I mean I'll leave it at that for now. But if somebody wants to ask me a particular report that they're wanting, I can tell you whether or not you can get it out of the online. Sharing the virtual environment means that you don't have an office. Basically, there's not a space. Everybody kind of works out of their home. So, um, and yes, Chris, you can export reports to Excel. So if there's a report that you don't like it exactly the way that you want it in the, um, in, in the online edition, you can export it to Excel. And I'll show that to you in a minute. All right, well, in a few minutes. Um, all right. Dave, like I said, payroll can be spread to classes only through a journal entry. Uh, if you're using a QuickBooks payroll service, uh, you have to spread uh, to the programs or to the classes manually. All right? Boy, we've got a lot of questions. Uh, David, you want to read me a few? Yeah. Uh, there, there's one that I answered, but I thought that it probably could be good to address on the call. Okay. Um, someone asked that they had international staff with very poor Internet connection who sends over uh, uh, portable files via email for their accounts that are imported into the U.S. version of QuickBooks. And we were hoping we'd be able to address that issue with QB Online in the U.S. while still being able to have their international staff using desktop copies of QuickBooks sent to them. No. We can't take a desktop data file and just import transactions into the online edition. Your best answer is to make everybody, you know, is to have all of the users be in the online edition. And Jill, yes, the data uh, exports very well. <laughs> uh, Peggy wanted to know, does QuickBooks track investments? Uh, QuickBooks doesn't necessarily track investments. I mean, you can set up an account for your investment, but you'll need to do entries to record the transactions in and out of it, uh, and record the gains and the losses. It's not as if it's like if you're thinking that it would be like it is in QuickN. It's not. All right. Um, all right. So let's move on. Uh, and uh, well, I don't know. Is there anything? Because some of these questions aren't really about whether it's good for me. This is more well. Some of it, uh, I guess, they're seeing whether or not it'll do what it'll do and what it won't do. Let's save some of those questions for a little bit later. Um, credit card payments in QuickBooks, though, John says yes, you can accept credit card payments in the online edition. All right. So uh, let's. All right. So the first thing uh, that I want to cover is how to sign up for a QBO account at, um, at TechSoup. And so Allison, I think I'm going to turn it over to you uh, and let you talk about the um, let you talk about the offering. Sounds great. Uh, if we could advance to the next slide. Terrific. So for years we've been getting this question, um, when is TechSoup going to have QuickBooks Online available? And I'm happy to say that we finally do. We have QuickBooks Online Plus available to eligible nonprofits. As Greg mentioned, it's a $50 administrative fee or admin fee, and that covers a 12-month subscription. And every subsequent 12 months that you'd like to renew your subscription, you come back, you pay $50, and you're good for another 12 months. Um, who's eligible? It's 501c3s and public libraries. You can have an annual operating budget of up to $10 million. It's pretty open eligibility in terms of your mission type. Um, legislative political advocacy organizations are not eligible. Um, I do want to point out that uh, faith-based organizations are eligible for the Intuit program now. I know that we have a couple of churches that have joined us today. Um, since this question came up on chat, 
I see a number of you have asked if, uh, if, if you have an existing paid QuickBooks Online subscription, are you eligible for the TechSoup subscription? And you are, but there's a slight caveat. Um, you can't migrate your existing subscription with all of its data to the TechSoup donated offer. What you'd have to do is you have to export your data from your paid subscription and then rebuild your, your organization file and re-import your data into the TechSoup offer. So it's a little bit of a, a wonky solution, but it's the uh, best we could do. Um, so if we continue on to the next slide, I'm going to walk you through how to get your QuickBooks Online Plus account through TechSoup. So you go to our homepage at TechSoup.org, and you click that um, Get Products and Services drop-down menu, and where you see by donor or provider, you're going to click on over to Intuit. And then uh, next slide, please. Um, so you want to make sure to put the QuickBooks Online Plus one-year initial subscription product in your shopping cart. Uh, do not request the subscription renewal. That will be in subsequent years when you want to renew your product, if you'd like to renew your product. But this product is the one that you want to request initially. And you'll get a fulfillment email that will contain your URL where you'll go to sign up, uh, which Greg is going to demo. So back to you, Greg. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen again. And you're going to see, and I, and I realize guys there's a lot of questions about more stuff about QBO. We're going to have plenty of time to answer those questions. Do not worry. But let me just get through the rest of the thing on how to sign up for this thing. Uh, so I'm back showing my screen. Hopefully you'll be seeing this. I'm in my email. And this is what you'll get. You'll get an email that will um, – let me just make this bigger here. Uh, dear Greg, thank you for um, requesting Intuit donation through TechSoup. And then there's a link. So we're going to follow the link. And the first thing that you need to do is you'll need to set up an account with Intuit. All right? And because presumably you don't have an account. Now if you already have an account with Intuit, you can, you can put in that username and password. But if you don't have an account with Intuit, then it's going to want you to set up an account at this time. So I'm just waiting for the page to open up. Uh, oh wow, it already knew that I – that's interesting. All right, I need to go. I want, I want you to see exactly what I see. So I'm going to – go to a different place to do this. Hold on one second. I apologize for this. It's a technical difficulty that sometimes happens in life. All right. All right. Okay, let's try this one more time. All right. So when you click on the link, this is what you're going to see. And if you already have an account at Intuit, because maybe you have the desktop version and you have an account, you can click Sign In, and you can put in your email and password that you have with Intuit. But if you don't, then you can just create one on the fly, which I'm going to do right now. And I'm just going to put – all right. And just to make this quick, I'll just cut and paste this. Oh, uh-oh. All, right. All right. We'll just put a 1 in here. All right. Now put a name. Actually, I'll just put my name. And I should probably do something to keep this more interesting at this point, shouldn't I? Like sing or dance or something. Well, dancing wouldn't really work. Yeah, I don't think singing will either. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? All right, so uh, that's all that you need to do to set up an account. So I'm going to click Sign Up, and it's created my account. But then what it's going to do is it says, okay, now I want to set up your company. Okay? So I am waiting for it. All right, great. So it's going to ask you just some basic information about the company. And at this point, we've got one of two choices. All right? One thing we can do is we can go ahead and fill the rest of this out. And there's just a very few amount of questions. And that's what you would do if you're wanting to create a data file from scratch 
in the online edition. But those of you, and there's a lot of you, that have a desktop version, another option for you is to upload the data file um, from the desktop into the online edition, in which case you actually don't need to fill out the rest of these screens. But I'm going to go ahead and we're going to take this one step at a time. First I'm going to show you what to do if you don't have a, um, if you don't have a desktop version, or you have a desktop version, but it's such a mess that you just want to start over again. So I'm just going to my cool um, profit. All right. And then we'll just put an address. And I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Apparently it's raining everywhere in the country right now. Okay. Now this is kind of cool. I can add my logo. I'm going to click Browse. Here's my logo on my desktop. The reason why you'd want to add your logo to your data file is because it can be added to forms. Like if you decide you want to send a receipt to your donors out of the online edition, you can have your logo on that form. So that's kind of cool. All right. Then it wants to know what industry you're in. Now at this point, you want to type nonprofit. Okay, that's the one you want to pick. All right. Uh, and I'm just going to say that we sell products and services. The rest of these questions you don't actually need to answer. I'll go ahead and put something here, but you don't actually need to answer. And I'll just do that. And then down here in the bottom right, I'm going to click Next. And then what it's doing right now is it's creating your company, but it's also comparing. What it's doing is it's saying, okay, it's telling me that there's over a million businesses using the online edition worldwide. Um, out of those, 28,000 of them are nonprofits, and 207 of them are near my address. So that's kind of cool. I imagine this number, this 28,000, is going to grow tremendously over time. All right, so now I'm going to click Next. And then what's going to happen is it's going to open up the data file, and then this window is going to come back again. All right? This is a glitch where this window keeps popping up over again, and you end up in a loop where you keep answering the same questions over and over again. It's quite annoying. If you press the Escape button, that window will go away, and then you'll be in your data file. All right? And then once you're in your data file, then it's time to set things up. All right? Now, that's basically how you would sign up for the account. Then anytime you want to get into the account, you just type, I think I put Margo1 at QuickBooksMadeEasy.com, and you put your username, and it will take you back to the account. Now, I'm going to go back to the slides for a second. Sorry I'm kind of going back and forth here, but it just makes the most sense. So, to those of you that have the desktop version of QuickBooks, I always get a question, should I um, upgrade? I mean, should I go ahead and upload the data file to the online edition? All right? So the answer is yes, provided that your data file is in good shape. And when I say data file is in good shape, what I mean is your bank accounts are reconciled. And that means in QuickBooks that you've reconciled the bank accounts. What that tells me is that all of the transactions are entered into the software. So that's good. If you've got a data file where you haven't reconciled before and the, all the transactions aren't necessarily in there, then I'm going to tell you don't do it. Okay? I'm going to tell you just start a new file in QBO. Also, are you getting good reports? If you're liking the reports you're getting in the desktop, what that tells me is that you set things up correctly. So provided that you, if you set things up correctly, then again, I'm going to say, you know what, let's up to upload that data file into the online edition. But if these two things are not true, then I'm going to say, no, let's not do that. Let's start over in QBO. But one of the big concerns is people don't want to re-enter all of their donor and vendor information like their name, address, phone number. If you're using QuickBooks as a donor database, you might have all those in your customer list. Don't want to have to deal with entering that. You don't have to. You can import that list 
from the QuickBooks desktop into the online edition. All right, so you don't have to worry about that. So uh, let's see here. Go back over here. All right. So what I'm going to do is um, these are the things, and actually I'm going to go back and hide that slide again. I'm going to go back to this slide. I'm going to go uh, share my screen again. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what to do if you do want to upload your data file. All right. So right now uh, I am in my data file, my online edition data file. And I'm going to go ahead and sign out of that data file right now. I'm just going to sign out of it. All right. And what it does is it will take me back to the screen where I can sign in again. So here's how you take your desktop data file and upload it into the online edition. So here we are in the desktop. All right. Just wait for it to pop up on the screen. It should be there now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Company menu. And in the Company menu, you'll see something that says Export Company File to QuickBooks Online. Now this feature will be here provided that your data file is in desktop version 14 or 15, I believe. Maybe it's in 13. Before 12 though, I would not say that I would tell you that this feature isn't here, but QuickBooks has a tool, and I can send people the link to the tool that will allow you to basically uh, update your version to 2015 of QuickBooks Desktop so that then after you do that, you can upload it to the online edition. So does that make sense? If you're in 2013 or later, you simply click here. If your version of QuickBooks is older than 2013, I'll send you a link. It will allow you to update your version to 2015, and then you'll have this button and you can upload it. So let me show you how to upload it. I'm going to click Export Company File to QuickBooks Online. And this is literally what you do. And then you sit and wait for the window to open because your internet's really slow. <laughs> <clears throat> ah, there we go. So I'm going to put the user ID and the password in. Uh, Marga1 at QuickBooksMadeEasy.com. And then we'll put the password. And check that you've agreed to the terms. You know, you never want to actually read this stuff. You just want to check it. <laughs> Don't read anything. All right, so then I'm going to sign in. And it's signing into the account. And this is really cool. It knows that there's already a file. See, when I signed up for the account initially like I did a few minutes ago, it created a company file for me. It didn't have anything in it, but it created a company file. And so now I can tell it, you know what, replace my existing QuickBooks Online company with the one that is here, okay? the, my cool nonprofit, which is this one right here. Okay? I'm going to click Continue. And now what it's doing is it's exporting the data to QuickBooks. Now, it doesn't take very long. It may take longer if your data file is really huge, but it shouldn't take that long. Most I've seen is a couple of hours. And then what happens is you get an email saying that it's uploaded. Okay, I got it. All right. So then I'm going to go back into where you sign in. And I'll click it. It's going to open up my data file. But now it won't be the old data file. What it will be is the data file that you uploaded from the desktop. There we go. All right. And you can kind of tell the difference because – let me get rid of some of these screens here – because there's numbers here. There wasn't numbers before. All right. So, um, the first thing that you're going to want to do when you upload from the desktop to the online edition is you're going to want to check to make sure that everything uploaded properly. All right? So what I would say is the best thing to do is to pull a report. And what I would say is pull a profit and loss report. And to get to your reports in the online edition, and we'll talk about how to navigate around in a little bit, but you click Reports. 
I'm going to go to Profit and Loss. And I'm going to make the Profit and Loss be all dates. Okay? So I'm going to take this. I'm going to make it all dates. I'm going to run the report. Okay? So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my desktop because I still have the data file in the desktop. It didn't remove it. It just created a copy of it that it uploaded to the online edition. I'm going to run a P&L in the online edition, make it all dates. And then basically what you do is you compare. So corporate grants is $120,000 here. Corporate grants is $120,000 here. So really I can just kind of look at the bottom and see net income, 31904 And I'll go back over here, net income, once again, 31904 You'd want to compare that for the balance sheet and the profit and loss. All right? So I'm going to go back to the slides. And now I'm going to show you this screen here. There are certain things that when you go um, from desktop into QBO, there are certain things that won't update. Those of you that are using one of the QuickBooks payroll services, that information will not upload, like the direct deposit information for employees' checks. Okay? Now if you're not using a QuickBooks payroll service, then it's irrelevant. Um, customized sales forms. If you're using the desktop, customized an invoice as an example, um, or a sales receipt to make it look real pretty and add your logo. You can do that kind of stuff in QBO, the online edition, but what you've customized, that won't, that won't upload. Custom fields. In the lists, the customer list, the vendor list, you can have customized fields to track additional pieces of information. You can't have that or you don't have that in the online edition. So if you love using the list and you have a lot of stuff you want to track, you're not going to be able to do that. So that's a reason maybe not to go to QBO. Okay? Um, if you are downloading transactions from your bank account into the desktop version, that link between your bank and QuickBooks is broken when you go to QBO. You will need to sign up again in QBO, but it is really easy. And I will tell you, that downloading an online edition is much better than it is in the desktop version. It happens automatically every day, and it's always free. It's great. Uh, if you have reports that you've memorized, you'll need to recreate those reports in the online edition. Now this freaks people out. Reconciliations. When you convert your bank recs, technically they undo. So you'll have to re-reconcile, but before you freak out, the fact that they have cleared, in other words, the little check next to each transaction, those of you with the desktop know what I mean, that will stay. So basically it takes about three minutes to do one bank rec from the beginning of time through the end of the prior month, and you just mark all. There's a button that's called Mark All. You check off all the transactions, and then you uncheck the few that haven't cleared. So you've got to re-reconcile, but it only takes a few minutes. The biggest issue when you convert from uh, the desktop to the online edition is that budgets. Budgets don't, uh, they don't go. You'll need to re-enter those budgets again. So let me stop uh, and take some more questions from you guys. Um, and we've got plenty of time. So uh, talk to me, everybody. What you got? David? Okay. Okay. I have um – um, Sonus, can you uh, enter a check directly into the register on QBO? Yes, you. Yes, you, well, you know it's a good question. Let me check. I think you can. I don't like entering things into the register, which is why I don't like automatically know the answer. Hold on a second here. Let me see. What's the next question? Um, explain spreading payroll. Explain spreading payroll. Okay. <laughs> So what I'm talking about here is we use classes to track our programs. So when you enter a check, the expense account is salaries. But then part of that salary should be pointed to the program 
part of it should be pointed to admin, and part of it should be pointed to fundraising, so that we can spread trans we can spread the check between program admin and fundraising, so that um, I can get a report to see how my program is doing. Um, that is something that you'll need to use a journal entry to do if you have the online edition. And I can show you the journal entry when we get back into QuickBooks. But does that answer that person's question? I'm not sure. Um, I think so. Dale, Dale, the, Dale said, is there a way around the budget issue? Not really. Um, by the time you figured out how to import something, you could have just retyped it. It's, it's, it's better just to retype it. Memorized transactions, they don't transfer either. Somebody asked me that question. Um, okay. uh, someone asked, uh, what was it you mentioned about setting up various accounts, admin, funding, etc.? So I think what I'm going to need to do is it sounds like there's some of you that are kind of brand new to the whole how to set things up in the nonprofit world. So let me just teach you that in a few minutes once we finish um, with this question, with these questions. Let's go on to something else, to um, another question. Okay. Um, credit card payments in QBO? Yes. Yes, you can accept credit cards in QBO. No problems there. Um, can payroll be set up in, uh, in this for online QuickBooks? You can set up payroll in the online edition. You have uh, more than one choice, yes. And I'll actually, you know, now that we've got some time, I'll play around with some of that. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, let me do this. Uh, John, if you have two company files, you will need to have two um, – uh, yeah, if you have two different uh, companies, you'll have two different company files is what you'll need, two different entities. But it says the church has a main and reserve account. Um, yeah, yeah. I would say you still should have one company even though you have two bank accounts. You can have this more than one bank account in a company. You don't want to have two company files because you're going to have to pay for the second one separately. And that $50 subscription only counts for one company. If you want a second company, you'll be paying that $40 a month. Ah, so thank you, Catherine. I should use the term allocate instead of spread. But Catherine, my name has two G's on the end, so there you go. <laughs> anyway, Catherine trying to correct me. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to switch back into the land of QBO. Oh, Catherine, now I got 15. Uh, All right, let's see. Let me switch back into. QBO so that I can really start answering some of these questions here about what you can and can't do in QBO. What I wanted to make sure of before we did any of this is I just wanted to make sure that everybody was clear on how to sign up for one of these things. So it looks like all of those questions have been answered. So uh, I'm going to go back into a different data file that actually has some transactions in it. Uh, QBO.intuit.com, so that I can actually show you how some of this stuff works. I don't know why that's taking so long. Okay, there we go. All right. That still took me to the wrong one. All right. Uh, okay. All righty then. Okay, so this data file has some information in it. So, All right, so the first thing that I want to teach you, and this is relevant for everybody listening to me, because a lot of you don't know online, but you know desktop, and then some of you don't know either. So what I'm going to tell you how to do is how to get around in the software. Okay? So when you first look at the screen, this is your home page. Okay? And uh, there's a bar along the side here that will take you to different places. But we're in Home right now. If I click on Customers, it will take me to the list of my customers, uh, which for you would be your donors, your members, or your students. But I'm going to go back to Home, and we'll just talk about what you see on the screen. Now the first thing that you see is basically some charts. Okay? And these charts are not necessarily what nonprofits 
are really into. But you know, there's not a nonprofit QBO edition. Okay? This is just the online edition and it's for everybody. So the first one here says income, and basically this is relevant for those of you that track that do invoicing out of QuickBooks. It gives you a list of your uh, it gives you the total of your open invoices, what's overdue, what's been paid. I can click on the bar and it gives me the details of what makes it up. Looks like there's only one. Uh, expenses, they're broken down into this kind of pie chart here. Uh, and uh, it goes from the highest dollar to the lowest. Uh, and I can click on one of these. Uh, everything else, I'll click on it, and it gives me all of the transactions that make up that number. Okay, so uh, there we go. So that's it's kind of cool. Here's a profit and loss as a bar chart. But the majority of what's on this screen, you're not going to be looking at. Okay. By the way, you see where the logo is? It can appear on forms, but it's also here on the top left of the screen. Uh, but uh, what about this stuff? So the, most of this stuff is kind of irrelevant here in the middle of the screen. The stuff on the right here, I don't know. It gives you some of the last transactions you did over the last few days, and you can click on them and get to it. Here's an invoice that I did. I can click on it, and it'll take me over to the invoice. That's kind of cool, I guess. You can edit it and change it. But I don't know. Not that big of a deal. Up here, here's where your bank accounts are. And one of the neat things you can do with QuickBook is you can download transactions. You can do it in the desktop or the online edition. You can download them from your bank. Here's where you would go to connect it. And I'm not going to do that now, um, but I will tell you that it's a cool feature. All right, so here's the deal. 95% of the screen, you're not going to be really going to that much. The two places I don't know if you can hear that siren. There's a siren behind me. Um, the, the building's burning down, but I'm going to continue to teach because that's the kind of people we are here at QuickBooks Made Easy. No. All right. So, did anyone laugh at that? David, are you there? I thought that was kind of funny. I, I laughed. I laughed to myself. Oh, okay. Well, I thought it was funny. But anyway, so here's the two places you're going to be going to in the online edition. You see this plus sign here? That's where you're going to go when you want to add transactions. Get it? Plus, add. We click it. Here's where all the windows are that you're going to go to. Here's where I go to enter a bill. Here's where I go to enter a check. Here's where I go to do an invoice if you're like a school or a membership association and you want to invoice. Um, before you ever enter transactions, you've got to set things up though. And this is where you've got to set things up, this teeny little gear over here. I don't know if this is called a gear or what. Is it a cog? I don't know what it is. Anyway, somebody chat David and tell me what the word is for this. But I'm going to click on it, and here's where you go to set things up. Here's where you go to set up your chart of accounts. Here's where you go to enter your budgets, like that. Okay? So you'll be either setting things up, or you'll be entering transactions. And then the other place is over here, reports. This is where you'll go to get to your reports. Okay? Ignore this transactions thing. It's a, just a, don't even worry about it. No one ever goes there. Go to the reports section here. This is where you get your reports. So setting things up, entering transactions, looking at reports. Now I'm going to spend just a few minutes showing you the appropriate setup for a nonprofit organization. All right? So the first thing would be what your chart of account should be. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on the gear, and I'm going to go over to the chart of accounts. And all right. And what you'll want to do is when it comes to your income and your expense accounts, because that's mainly what people are interested in, you want to make your income accounts the major categories of income, individual contributions, corporate, foundation, government grants. If you want to set up a separate account for each uh, grant, that's a mistake. Don't do that. The goal of my training uh, when I teach nonprofits how to use QuickBooks is I want you guys to have a P&L that is easy to read, that uh, is fits on one page. And the reason why I want to be able to do that is so your board will actually read it. 
I want a one-page P&L compared to budget for the board. Well, in order to get that, we can't have very many accounts. So what I teach in my training, my normal nonprofit training, is I teach basically that if there's a place to set up uh, or to track something other than the chart of accounts, I'm going to use that other place for it. So I can go to another report, which I'll show you in a little bit, that can give you a list of who is giving you your money. You don't need a separate income account for each donor. Also, if you have restricted grants, do not use the chart of accounts to track that either. All right? So just major categories. Now the expenses people really screw up. All right? When it comes to expenses, that's really neat. I can change the color of this. All right, anyway, whatever. All right, so when it comes to <laughs> expenses, I apparently have a very short attention span. Um, you want to make your expense accounts the natural category of expenses, salaries, payroll taxes, health insurance, space rental, just whatever the natural category of the expense is, what it is. That's very different from program versus admin versus fundraising. This is a second thing that nonprofits need to track. When they enter transactions, they've got to tell QuickBooks whether it, what the natural category of the expense was. Again, salaries, payroll, taxes, health insurance. That's what you use the accounts for. There's another list that you use to track whether the expense was for program, admin, or fundraising. What is that list? Somebody chat me up and tell me. I'm sure you guys know. Or some people know anyway. What's the list for that, David? Um, waiting. waiting for an answer. Really? Yeah. Uh, class. There you go, classes. All right. So classes is a different list. And what I'm going to do, I think what I'm going to do is just click on the gear, uh, go to all lists, and then go to classes. And this is where you're going to track whether expenses are program, admin, or fundraising. Now this organization, its purpose is to get the country off of foreign forms of energy, like oil, and get it on an environmentally friendly energy source right here in the United States, like solar panels or wind or something like that. So the, the programs are in service of that organization's mission. There's a guidance center, a conference, and an AWARE campaign. So what we've done is we've set these up as classes. Then when we enter expenses that are for the program, we can point them to that program. Additionally, if there are certain expenses that don't go for programs, and then they would either be administrative costs, like the cost of buying QuickBooks, or fundraising like the cost of sending out a direct mail piece. And all of your expenses, payroll and other, should be pointed to either program, admin, or fundraising. So let me just pop up a transaction here so that you can understand what I'm talking about. When you enter a check, we'll say, you can point it to an account. We purchased, uh, where is, here's postage. But that postage was for the Synergy Conference. So we'll point it to that class. And yes, you can take a transaction and you can split it between classes. So we bought some postage. wasn't for the Synergy Conference. It was just postage back at our office. So we'll put that to admin. So if you, if you enter transactions and point them to the classes, Look at the report that you can get. I'm going to run a report right now. I'm going to go to Reports, and I'm going to go to Profit and Loss. Now we've got just a general Profit and Loss, but I'm going to customize this thing. I'm going to make it – I'm going to change the date range here a little bit. You'll just bear with me here. July 1 of 2019 to 630 of 2020. And you see columns where it says total only. If I click the drop down, I can change it from total only to class. And when I run a report, and this is going to blow your mind, this is what I'm talking about that's proper setup. 
We have something that looks like a spreadsheet that is beautiful. It tells us not only how much we spent for each type of expense, but all the way at the bottom it gives me the total amount of money that I'm spending on each one of the programs plus admin plus fundraising. This is what I as your accountant need to do your 990 and your audit. But this is something that's helpful for the nonprofits too. Funders don't want to give money to an organization in, if the organization is spending less than 75% of its costs on program. By having these classes, you can easily see where your money is going and you can see what the percentages are. Okay? The other thing is that's kind of cool about this is you can also point your income to different classes. So what I've done here, and this is what I tell people to do in my training, is all of the revenue that applies to the Guidance Center, that program, put it to that program. Then you can tell whether a program is paying for itself or not. You see, this is great information to give a funder. All right? You know what? We are losing $14,000 on this program. I can, you know, it's a great program. Please give us some more money for the program. All right? It's awesome. Okay? Uh, looks like the Synergy Conference is making some money. See how valuable this could be? It's awesome. All right? Now this isn't what you would necessarily give the board. The board, you wouldn't give them all these columns. It would freak them out. But for, for the staff and for maybe a finance committee, this is awesome. All right? And yes, what that means is that we spread the costs including the payroll. Okay, including the paychecks. So I think I'm going to stop now because I've given you a little bit of background on setting up. And then uh, what we got about 30 minutes left. Is that right? 25. We got 25 minutes left. Awesome. So let's take some let's take some questions here. Uh, don't go anywhere uh, because I've got the offer at the end. We got some other stuff, but let's stop and take some questions. So roll it. Let's see what we got. Okay, we have quite a few. I can do them, any of them and all of them. Go for it. Can we handle independent contractors, 1099s, and like QuickBooks Online? Can you do 1099s in the online edition? The answer is yes, you can. Prepare 1099s. Next question. Um, we're using the enterprise version of QuickBooks. Can that be converted to the online easily? If we don't like online, can it be switched back to enterprise? Can you convert an enterprise data file into something that can be used in the online edition? Yes, you can. There's a secret keyboard shortcut <laughs> that you have to push in order to make the data file uploadable. And if you, uh, but I can certainly share that with you outside the call. That's something Intuit doesn't necessarily want to tell people. And yes, if you don't like the online edition, you can go back to enterprise. Not a problem. Okay. Um, Yvette asked, we have uh, QB2014, is, and there's no export to QBO under the company tab. Now why did you have to tell me that, David? <laughs> <laughs> so she's saying under the company tab there's nothing here? For the export to the okay. to QBO. So tell her – let me see if Thank it's – I I know. I'm trying to tell her. Uh, where is it in 2014? I have to pull up 2014. Go to the Utilities menu and see if you can find it there. And if you still can't, then just email me later and I'll tell you where it is. Yes, yeah, so you copy company file for QuickBooks Online with under Utilities. Under oh, file. cool. Look how good I am. Okay, next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, can you show what the budget screen looks like? I certainly is that a new, can. Is that a new I'm, feature to QBO? No. QBO has had budgets for years. The budgets are awesome. To get to the budgets, you go to the gear, and you go to budgeting right here. And if you've already entered a budget, there it is. So the budget screen looks very similar. Uh, the budgets are actually kind of cool in the online uh, edition because I'll show you what you can do here. These are the accounts, and these are the columns. But if I have something – let me show you this. Uh, 
This is it is assuming that you're budgeting by month. If you budget by year, you want to put the entire budget in the first month of your accounting year. All right? But uh, if you want to budget by month, I'm going to click New Budget. Uh, I wonder why that happened. Oh, David? Yes, sir. Why is this happening? What did you do? <laughs> yeah, I didn't do anything. I don't know what's going on here. There's some sort of pop-up blocker that I can't get rid of, and I don't want to spend more time on this. So I'm just going to go back to this. Oh, my good. Oh, my goodness. All right. Let's see. Uh, go back into budgeting. All right. This is what I wanted to show you. You see this enter by down here? You can really only enter it by month in the desktop version. In the online edition, you can enter it by month, by quarter, or you can enter it by year. So if you enter it by year, look what happens. This is kind of cool for people that want to budget by month. Uh, let's see. I'll just pick an account that doesn't – well, we'll just pick this rent account. So I'm going to pick the rent account, and I'm going to put the 17400 in it. And when I click Save, Oh, it's already in there. I've got to pick something that there isn't a number in here for. All right, so we'll pick repairs and maintenance. We'll say for the year it's going to be $15,000. And when I click Save, it spreads it for us automatically. So people that want to budget by month, but they don't want to have to put in 12 numbers, they've got the ability to use this feature here. They can also use this Copy Across button. Um, but here's where, that's where the budget is. So. I could go on and on about the budgeting. Um, if it would let me go into this other screen, then um, I could show you. But anyway, let's take the next question. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. Bobby wanted to know, can you enter some checks directly into the register and some payments without invoicing first? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, oh, somebody wanted to know about entering into the register. That's right. I never, I never really – did that. Um, so when it comes to entering expenses other than payroll, you've got two possibilities. What some people do is they'll enter a bill, and then when it comes time to pay it, so they enter the bill here, and then when it comes time to pay it, they click Pay Bills, which is right here. Okay? Some people don't do that. Some people instead just write checks, and you can certainly do that if you want. All right? It's not a problem plus, check, and you can just fill it out here. But his question, and somebody else's question was, can you enter it in the register? So um, let's go to the chart of accounts uh, right here, and view register. So that's where you go to get to it. And can you enter stuff right in the register? And yeah, the answer is, I'm sure the answer is yes, you can. No, the answer is no, you can't. So you can't enter stuff right in the register. So that is something that's different than the online, uh, than the desktop version. I don't think you should be entering stuff in the register, to be honest with you. Um, really, what you should be doing is downloading. But so I learned something. You can't enter something in the register. Next question. Uh, Jim wanted to know, can there be a QVO user with no privileges to make or delete entries, only view or audit entry reports? Okay, so what are the privileges in the online edition? So um, what he's talking about, folks, is that you can have up to five users in the data file. So um, each user is assigned their own email address and own username. You go to Manage Users to do that. So I've only got me, and I'm the master administrator. But I can add a new user. Oh, good Lord. David, do you have any quick way for me to get out of this <laughs> problem? Hold on. Um, <laughs> not, not using Mozilla? <laughs> well, you, you want me to go in under Chrome? I don't want to do this yet. Um, all right, so Marga or someone else, ask me a question while he's working on this.
Is there anybody that can uh, ask me questions? Yes. Greg, can okay. you hear me? I can. Ask me a question. Okay. Allison Phillips wants to know, can you show how to use QBO to track donor contributions? Sure. All right. So uh, you can track donor contributions. That would be basically you need to use QuickBooks. Is it done? Or you can't fix it? Okay. So let me show you how to um, let me show you how to use QuickBooks to track donors. What you want to do is you want to enter your donation into a sales receipt form right here. And it's kind of weird because somebody gives you a donation, you enter it in a form called a sales receipt. So that's kind of strange. It freaks you out. But you put the name of the donor here. You put um, the basically the income account here. Uh, we'll call it individual contributions is where we want it to go to. Uh, $100 here. And then if it was for a particular program, you can point it to that class. If not, point it to the fundraising class. I teach this in the training. All unrestricted contributions go to the fundraising class. Something that's earmarked for a program would go to that program's class. So I'll click it there. Now at this point, I can email the person. Now the email address is something that would already be listed. Uh, it's in the customer list. So you put your donors in the customer list. Here's the donation. And then Save and Send. So what happens is when you click Save and Send, it's going to send the person an email along with a receipt. All right? Now if you don't like what that email says, you are more than welcome to change the email. Okay? You can either change it individually here, because thank you for your business. That doesn't really work for a nonprofit. But I can type here. I can change it individually, or I can change it globally. So if I go over to the gear, and I click on Company Settings, and I click on under Sales, I click Default Email Message Sent with Sales Forms. If I click there, and I'll scroll to Sales Receipt, these are the words, and that's why they appeared in that email. So I can change this, and I'll just I'll get rid of this part, and I'll just say, Thanks for your donation. Uh, whatever words you want to put. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, there. Delete that. And then I can put for your tax records, the donation is attached. The donation receipt is attached, I guess is what we would put. Not the best typer. I didn't take it in school. Well, I did, but I didn't pay any attention. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. So uh, I'm going to save that. You can also change the form itself. Uh, customize look and feel. And we can we have a standard, but we can create our own new style of form, or we can put our logo on it. Uh, we can add words to the bottom of the form. This is where we would put um, no goods or services were exchanged. Blah 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 blah. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, and I'll call it my donation receipt. Okay. And then we've got this form. So I'll go ahead and save this. I know this is taking a while, but this is important. Okay. Uh, and I think I want to edit to the let me see. No, this is fine. All right. So we'll go to the sales receipt that we were just at. And to get to a prior one, you just push on the top left here. And uh, well, I don't see the one that I was at, but I'll just pick this one here. 
All right. So and I'll put my email here. And then when I save and send, first you got to go to customize. And oh, did I not save that other form? It looks like I didn't. All right. Well, I'll click save and send. All right. And so then see how the wording changed here? The receipt didn't change because I didn't save my changes to the templates, and that's my bad. I should have done that. But um, if I did, this template would have changed also. I'll go ahead and send it. And basically it's going to send an email letter to the donor thanking them. Uh, and I can go into my email and, and show it to you in a minute. But before I do that, uh, did I just close out? Oh my gosh, I just closed out. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the email here. Uh, box. There's the thank you letter right there. It's not really a letter. Dear Elliot, thank you for your donation. We appreciate it very much. In the body of the email it says the donation amount, and then here is the uh, attached PDF document. All right. So um, the only other thing that I wanted to show her is a list of donation history so she can see that in QuickBooks, and then we'll move on. I'm sure this has either made people very happy or generated a lot more questions, or both, because that really kind of went into the gory details of it. Let me show you a little report here of your donors. Uh, it's called, under All Reports, under Sales, it's called a Sales by Customer Summary Report. And basically it's going to give me a list of my donors and how much they've given me over a period of time. All right. There it is. And I can actually customize it. I can change the columns to make it by year. I'll make it calendar years. And then you'll get a column for each year so that you can analyze trends with your donors and see, okay, this person gave every year, but they didn't give this year, that kind of thing. We don't have a whole lot of trends here, but that kind of gives you the idea. All right. Whew, that was a lot. So um, what else do we got with questions here? How are you all feeling? Is that okay? Did I get in the weeds too much? Somebody talk to me. How are we feeling? Hello? David? They've, 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 all, they've, all, they've all left you, Greg. <laughs> they've all left me. <laughs> Nobody loves me anymore. Um, well, it's 318. Let's do a couple more questions. Um, who else has a question? Just, just for your confidence level, of people are saying it's very helpful. Okay, good. Okay, that's good. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, let's see here. Um, I had does QBO support accounting by organization departments, and then can it provide consolidated accounting reports? Okay, so does QBO support departmental reporting? Absolutely. That's what the class list is. It's your departments. Okay. Um, Yvette asked, so if our budget is over 500000 then the online edition wouldn't be advisable? No, no, that's not true. I, I gave it as a general term, 500000 Yvette, the bigger answer is, do you have a ton of employees? Do you have a ton of restricted grants or not? That's really where the rubber meets the road. So um, you know, I'm going to – even if you have restricted grants, I, I can still use – uh, them, I can still use the online edition to track them. Uh, but if she has a lot of payroll, that's really the thing that would make the difference. Who else? Um, well, this question is going to be probably too big for you to address, but okay. we've had a few people asking about um, tracking unrestricted and restricted funds. Okay. So, I mean, I will touch on this. I will touch on this. So. Those of you that know about this, and most people don't, uh, but those of you that know about it, and let me go to a different data file here where I've got this set up. Hold on one second. Nonprofit organizations actually, 
their equity section on the balance sheet. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it because nobody does <laughs> except these people that have asked this question. The equity section accountants know this has to be broken up into unrestricted net assets, temporarily restricted net assets, and permanently restricted net assets. You should absolutely set those accounts up in your chart of accounts list. Make them equity types. But QuickBooks, both the desktop and the online edition, is not going to put any transactions here. They are only going to put them to the retained earnings. And then what you'll need to do is once a year make a journal entry to move things out of retained earnings and into these other three buckets, to permanently, temporarily, and unrestricted net assets. All right? This is an accounting thing for reporting purposes. Now if your question is, can I get QuickBooks to track this stuff? Not directly. Now I do show you in the training how to get QuickBooks to track restricted grants so that you can get a balance so you'll know what's in temporarily restricted net assets and what's in permanently, but you still have to do the journal entry yourself. All right? So that's I think the best answer that I can give for that. So I think what I'm going to do is um, – and we'll do some more questions in a few minutes. But what I wanted to do is um, a couple of things. Uh, once is this David? Is this a poll or not? That would need to be asked for Stephanie. Okay, so Stephanie, did you set this up as I a did. poll? No, I didn't realize you had another poll. Yeah, and I realized that. So I don't know if it's possible to set that up now or not uh, yeah. while I'm talking. But we have an email newsletter called Quick Tips that comes out once a month, um, and we were going to see whether or not you guys wanted the email newsletter. So I'll pass on that for now. Um, the big thing that I wanted to tell you about is one of the training products that we have, it's QuickBooks Made Easy for Nonprofits, the Essentials, and it's specifically for the online edition. Now we have it for the desktop version and we have it for the online edition. Those of you that are considering using the online edition, this product, it's a training product. It's about six and a half hours of learning. It goes through from soup to nuts everything you need to know about how to use QuickBooks if you're a nonprofit. It's normally $229. We're going to offer it for $99, and we're only going to offer it for 48 hours. Um, in order to sign up for it, you would simply go to TSQBO and then a 4 and then an 8. And what that will do is that will give you access to – it will basically reduce the price from $229 down to $99. Once you do that, you can add technical support for a year. And this sounds crazy, but I'm serious. For one year, it's $100 more. So for basically $99 – let me get the little arrow here – $99, plus 100, so we're talking about $199, you'll get the training product that you need, and you'll get a year's worth of tech support. All right? So David, i got something I'm just going to throw at you real quick. So there's a lot of people on the call that are just kind of checking out the online edition, and they might ne not necessarily want uh, to go ahead and get the online product. So what I want to do is I want to extend this code so that those of you that would like to can just get tech support with me for $99. And then you can call me. I can even dial into the software. So I don't know how that would work, David. Uh, we'll give you – I don't know if you can make this code work for the tech support as well. Is that something you can do? No, it's not. Okay, so we need to create a code, and you can tell them what the code is in a minute. But that way, if you don't want to get the online edition, but you still want tech support, I can get it to you for $99. That will only be for 48 hours as well. Um, you want to make up a code so you can it's, tell? Well, it's, well, it's TS48HOUR, uh, TS48HOUR, and that will give them the tech support at $100. Okay, ts 48 and then the word hour. Is that uppercase or lowercase? It doesn't matter. Either okay. one. All right. And then, and then they'll be able to get uh, tech support. And just uh, for $99, if you want to get the training, that's the tech support for the – I mean, that's the code for the training. 
All right. So uh, I'm going to let's see. I think I'm just going to share my screen one more time. Okay, Greg, and we need to start wrapping up. We've got a yeah. couple more things. So. No, I know. I know we need to. I know we need to wrap up. So um, you just go to QuickBooksMadeEasy.com, and if you want the product, you go to Products, Nonprofits. And that's where you go to get uh, the training product. Here's the training product right here, QuickBooks Online Made Easy for Nonprofits. If you want the tech support, you just click Tech Support, and uh, it'll take you to a window where you sign up for the tech support. And just don't forget those codes. All right. So here's the tech support. Just be sure you click the uh, nonprofit tech support over here. Uh, all right. So let me turn it back over. And, uh, and you guys can um, finish up. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Greg. This was so great. And you had so many questions. I know you got through almost all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and David, if you'll put that code in the chat, I think that will help people. Yeah, Bella and wants to know what code is. I just Perfect. told them, if you didn't see this in the chat, if you do want to be signed up for Greg's newsletter, if you'll just put a yes in the chat, and then Greg will get you those names. Okay. Cool. Here's so the code again. So much. Okay, the, the code for the regular one, and then the the code for tech support is uh, TS. What was it again, David? Four eight hour. TS four eight hour. hour. I just, and I just broadcasted it to everybody as well All through right. the chat. All right. Great. Thank you. Well, we do have some additional resources to share with you. This will be available to you in the PowerPoint that will get emailed to you later today or tomorrow as well, so you don't have to worry about trying to look at those right now. Um, we do have a way to continue this, question, this conversation. So we have a blog post. And again, this will also be in your follow-up email. So if you have additional questions or if we didn't get to your questions, you can definitely ask them in the comments there. And we have more time to get back to you. Uh, as adult learners, we always find that it's helpful to remind ourselves of things. So if you want to share in the chat, what's one thing that you learned in today's webinar or something that you want to remember to go and do <laughs> as a result of some of the things that Greg shared? Share that in the chat, and that just will kind of help cement it in your brain and also help Greg see the great valuable things that you learned. We do have some upcoming webinars. Next week we have How to Select the Right Computer Hardware for Your Organization. And we also have a deadline coming up for the Adobe contest. And I think that's a wrap today. Again, another thank you to ReadyTalk for their support today. Thank you so much to our presenters, to QuickBooks Made Easy. It was great to have Greg and David helping out so much, and Marga on the chat as well. And thank you to our TechSoup support, Allison and uh, Allie helping in the chat as well. And then thank you most of all to you, our participants. As I said, later today you'll get an email with a link to the archived recording of the event and all the resources that were mentioned. So thank you so much for sharing your time with us, and have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank you.